Hello. Hello. And welcome to Twitch and Stitch. <laughs> Nailed it. I know. I was just thinking that. Like, we never nail it on the first go. That's awesome. So, we're back, and it's been two weeks, and we're so excited. And I have to tell you guys, I love knitting. She does. She was telling me just before we started that she loves knitting. I do. I just, I do. I know you feel the same way. So, it's awesome. I was a little surprised that she loves knitting. You know, <laughs> totally, totally blew me away. I was like, what? Really? You love knitting? The loving of the knitting. Yes, I'm loving knitting right now. So I'm Marsha, also known as Fairy Little on Instagram and Ravelry. And I also have a Fairy Little Facebook page that is, it is right now changing into a support kind of page for the podcast. But it's in transition right now, so people are joining, people are, um, who enjoyed it as a shop are leaving, so it's in transition, it's happening. <laughs> and um, we are on, we have a group on Ravelry, and we'll put the link below so you can join us. We are at over 600 members in our group. Yeah. We're growing slowly but steadily, and I really appreciate that. It's exciting. We're going to do a thousand member drop, aren't we? Yes. Yes. When we get to thousand members. We get to thousand members. And who are you? I am Scylla, otherwise known as Scylla underscore underscore P on Ravelry. Nope. That's wrong. I am Scylla <laughs> <laughs> underscore nope, underscore P on Instagram. And I am Pudzilla on Ravelry. Yes. So, yes. Find me. Add me as a friend. Yeah. We're all about the adding, adding all of the people as all of the friends. We really are. We like friends. Mm -hmm. And I believe we made a lot of friends. We for have this podcast, and right? I don't think you can ever have too many friends. I don't. Yeah, I like it. Me too. Um, and we want to say thank you to everybody who is a returning viewer. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. And thank you to everyone who is um, a new subscriber. This is a uh, knitting and. Once a year spinning podcast. <laughs> spinning for that one time a year. The one yes. time I showed spinning. Oh, yeah, I Last remember year. that. Yeah. Last year. Yeah, it's almost that yeah. time of year again. Yeah, show just show some spinning. spinning. <laughs> Every once in a while, there's other crafting besides knitting. Yeah. Like once a year. There's probably maybe three, three times a year. Something else, yeah. Maybe yeah. some crochet. Yeah. Throw in Ooh. whatever. Got a cross stitch pattern I could do. Oh, yeah. I could add that to... Yeah. The wonder that is to the docket, right? <laughs> That's awesome. So, and if you haven't subscribed yet, just go down and click subscribe. We appreciate all of our subscribers. It's very, very true. And um, we have had a busy couple of weeks. It's been spring break this past week. And we went on a trip. Scylla and I went with our book club. We did. We were, have the most amazing book club. It's just a wonderful, wonderful group of supportive women. And last our... year, we decided that we wanted to go to Mexico for one of our book clubs. So we're like, we have to read a book that has to do with Mexico so we can go to Mexico. Um, and all of the spouses vetoed that. <laughs> <laughs> they all were just like, that's how, not how about be no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we try to read books that are along the theme of like of some sort of theme so we can do something based on the book we read. Yeah. So like dress up or Yeah. So we read Sweet Valley so we could dress up like the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a really um thought provoking <laughs> book club. Right? We we read uh through the looking glass because we wanted to have a Mad Hatter tea party. Yeah. Which we still haven't. Which we still haven't because had because we went to Sparkling Hill instead. Yeah. So we went to Sparkling Hill we didn't read a book that had anything to do with Sparkling Hill, but that was our, our answer to uh, not going to Mexico. So we planned last year to take a trip, and then one of the ladies said, hey, Mex uh, Sparkling Hill would be a nice one. And it's, um, it's a spa outside of the city of Vernon in the Okanagan here. And it's, it's for, um, they have girls getaways, and they have couples, couples. things, and... And it was it was a lot of fun. It was super relaxing with your room. You get to, um, all of their saunas. They have what ten different saunas and the pools yeah, and, and have, yeah and everything else that a spa has. They have that stuff too. But the um, stuff that we really enjoyed was the the stuff that was included. Yeah, the stuff yeah. that was included. So 
that was a lot of fun. It was very relaxing. Um, we enjoyed ourselves immensely. We were there for two nights. Yeah, it was wonderful yeah. just to get away from the busy day-to-day -day life. Yeah, it was really good. And um, yeah, so we loved it. So if you're ever in the area... <laughs> You should check it out. Yeah, definitely yeah. recommend we it. Went, we went on weekdays because it's a little bit cheaper to go on weekdays versus the weekends. Mm -hmm. And by a little bit, it's about $800 less a night. <laughs> <laughs> so we went on a weekday. We uh, recommend the weekdays. They're not as busy either, so if you can go on a weekday. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. But this is not an advertisement for spa. This <laughs> <laughs> we do not have shares, so we are going to move on to um, what are you working on, Syl? So. I am working on um, um, my Madtosh uh, cable. It is made in merino silk yarn. It is the basic cable um, scarf. You can see the cables kind of pop. By Haley Waxberg from the Knitomatic. And I really love this scarf, and I, I put it on hold because I ran out of yarn, and then I couldn't remember the colorway. And luckily, um, Melinda, otherwise known as Yarnder Woman, um, was kind enough to post on our Ravelry page the name of the colorway. Which, <laughs> which thank you so much, because it saved my life. So like, I don't remember, and I couldn't find... It saved your life, your real life. It saved my life. It was knitting life or death. <laughs> And it's, it's just, it needed it. It's so pretty. So I went and I picked up um, another skein of the Madeline Tosh. Um, the colorway is Logwood. And it's beautiful. It's a silk merino blend. And it's just, it's really, really soft. So I can't wait to, to spin it. I only picked it up yesterday. So to I'm, spin it. To spin it. To spin it into a cake. That's, <laughs> wind it. <laughs> to wind it. Well, it spins. Oh my word. I know. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited to actually make that up into something beautiful so I can cake it and knit it. Oh. I am also working on this right here. Um, this is a Silla original design. It's probably going to turn out as wonderfully as the Blanket of Forever. Um, <laughs> so what happened was about three years ago, I knit an infinity scarf and I cast on way too many stitches and it came off the needles and it was, I can't even show, but it was... It was about this long plus times three. So it was, so I ended up wrapping it like five or six times around my neck just to get it to look about like this. Yeah. And at first I was like, oh man, I can't believe I did that. And it's my favorite scarf. I love it. It just keeps twisting and you can, I just, I love it. It's my favorite scarf. Um, so I was trying to do that again with this one. So we're not sure if I have enough stitches or what it's going to look like, but this yarn is really nice to work with. It's also Madeline Tosh. Um, it is Madeline Tosh. Uh, vintage, 100% super wool merino. And super wash merino. Super wash merino, not super wool. Um, and it's a worsted, and the colorway is Spectrum. <laughs> and I'm knitting on 6 millimeter um, needles, Addy Interchangeables, which is number 10 US. So I'm really excited to see how it's going to turn out. Um, and last time when I had a problem with curling, people told me to knit, it has a name. Um, it's the stitch where you knit one curl one. Ribbing. Uh, the ribbing. Is it called ribbing once in it one curl one? Yeah. Okay. So just to do a ribbing. So I just like did the first <laughs> row. I thought the classic rib was knit two purl two. Oh, okay. Realize it wasn't the same stitch. But yeah. <laughs> Marsha has all the answers for me. So when I'm not sure, I just pause and wait. <laughs> but yeah, so it seems to have, have stopped the curling, which is wonderful. So I'm really excited to see how it's going to turn out. And I've decided that if it doesn't turn out how I like it, the yarn is so nice to knit with that I'm just going to rip it out and start again with something new. Marsha! Yes. What are you working on? Well, I'm working on a lot of things, but I have been pretty monogamous um, so far. Just one second. I'm putting stitches on so I can Kitchener. <laughs> okay. I have been working on, well, first things first. I've been working on the Adrift um, by Carol Feller, and it's really hard to see this but it's just kind of an open drapey um, top that's it's not quite a cardigan it's short sleeves um, it doesn't have any buttons or anything and I'm doing it in the lace weight you guys have seen this before and I've just gotten a little bit farther than where I was because I worked on this and then I cast something else on so I've gotten not far I'm 
increasing for the, um, it's a top down, so I'm increasing for the arms right now. And I even stopped knitting it mid row. I was on a pearl row. <laughs> and I was like, ah, let's cast something else on. So it seems that I'm probably doing a knit this and. Yeah. <laughs> so, so obviously it's gotten put away. But it's, um, I'm knitting it in Diamond Luxury uh, Pimo Lino Calori, and it's 464 yards in each of the cakes. Um, and it's lace weight yarn, and it is 60% uh, Pima cotton and 40% linen. That's the, that's the tag. Oh, there you go. There it is. Diamond Luxury. And I'm really enjoying it. It's, um, it will soften up a little bit more once it's blocked and it will loosen up. Um, the stitches, it's, it's a fairly loose gauge. I don't know if I mentioned this last time, like you can see through it, it but here it gets really warm in the summer so I feel like that's perfect for our weather here and it is in my you sew and sew bag which I've shown before it has beehives on the outside and bees on the inside I really love your bee bag yeah I love it too Just, we, have, we have a hive feels like it should smell like honey I feel like yeah you're right it should um, also, I've been working on my Narita Express. It hasn't gotten a whole lot of love because I've been working on other things and I will show you. But, um, and I don't have the name of this yarn. It's a Knit Picks. Last time we described it as a berry. <laughs> um, it's, it hasn't got, gotten a huge amount of love, um, the Narita Express. Um, but... I wanted to show you this too. I was going to say, I love that bag. Who's the designer, Mar? That bag's wonderful. I am the creator of this bag. It has a little <laughs> um, clip here so you can clip it onto something. And it's got, I like having a pull on both sides because when I, when I do this, it makes it easier. When I unzip it and zip it. And then I made this little uh, Notions pouch to go with it. And the inside fabric is just like a little swirly kind of fabric and it's like got that. these cute little butterflies on the outside and it's like a little bit of a gold leaf reflective kind of fabric. And I'm actually thinking that I might do some bags for sale. Um, it wouldn't be something that I did full time, I don't think. I would do some and then see how well they do. Um, but. I can't sit at a machine for a long period of time. Like I spent a couple days this week at my machine and my back is super sore from it. Um, I, a lot of people in the knitting community have, have back issues and, and I am no, <laughs> no, no exception. <laughs> I was, uh, I was rear-ended by a drunk driver, um, about what eight nine ten, like 11 years ago was it really that long ago mm -hmm. 11 years ago and wow. um and the the drunk driver hit a car that was behind uh, me and one of my daughters um our oldest foster daughter and accordioned a car between us um and i spent the next two years going to physiotherapy and chiropractic and i had two vertebrae that had locked together and it took a really long time after I'd go to physio, I'd be upside down on a chair trying to get some traction and relief. And so um, unless I'm like working out and strengthening my back, which I haven't done in a while, um, my back suffers when I sit down and, and sit to the machine because I lean forward. But knitting is fine because I, I have a chair that I can lean back on and I can put cushions behind my back and, and that gives me some relief. So long story short, I'm going to do up some bags. I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, I will do an Etsy, create an Etsy shop to have them in there. I don't know when that's going to be, but I kind of want to get some, a little bit of extra income because I'm not currently in the out, corporate world. Out in the corporate world, so I just need a little bit of extra income just to, to pay for, you know retreats and postage and stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love that postage, yeah. Postage. Fair enough. <laughs> so, yeah, so I think that's coming. Um, and I have also been working on Sockhead Hat by Kelly McClure, and I am using Nicole C. Mendes 
yarn and I've gotten quite quite a bit farther um, last time you saw it, I think it was down about here and so I've knit that much that much on it since then and it just kind of bring this with me when I'm going somewhere and just it's an easy knit I don't have to think about it it's fairly quick so I just mm. sit and work on it I love the way the colors are coming up on the screen I know so bright I, I I think honest it looks kind of like something out of Dr. Seuss <laughs> <laughs> at the moment yes <laughs> yeah I'm pretty excited though it's a gift so yes I'm excited that that will be done in a short period of time if I actually sit down and knit on it that is exciting I really like it I think it's beautiful mm -hmm. so yeah it's been a very creative last couple of weeks um, and I'm not going to show you this yet because that's my favorite thing she's knitted on and knitted on. Yeah. But she'll show you. Just but I'll wait. show you. Because by the time we get to the finished objects thread, it should be finished. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> it's so close. It's so close. I'm just kitchenering <laughs> the arms right now and weaving an end. So hopefully by the time we get to that section, it will be done. And then I'll show you. I'll show you anyway. I, <laughs> yeah, I'll gonna... show you any. No, you can't see it if it's not quite finished. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, so we also would like to ask um, one of our lovely viewers Drummel. what she's working on. Now, this viewer has been in contact with both Scylla and I. She is going to be attending a um, retreat that we're going to in Sorrento. In Sorrento, and that is at the end of May. It's the Okanagan. Mm -hmm. Um, knitting, knitting retreat. retreat. We would like to ask Vicki Shaw, who is vshaw7 on Instagram, Instagram. what, are, what you are you working, working on? on? Very nice. Wow. <laughs> That's gorgeous. <laughs> so we have a couple um, stash enhancements. Before we go into stash enhancements, I just want to s just say a quick thing. Um, because I was, I've been speaking with a couple different podcasters about um, stash, and um, and there is, I'm not going to give this any more um, time than it than it needs, but there's a little bit of sensitivity um, regarding different fibers used for knitting, um, and mm -hmm. we just want to say that we knit with what we love. Yeah, and um, I. I don't really show stash that I purchased myself. I show stash that are gifts, gifts. Yeah. from people. So, um, and my goal this year is to get my stash down. So, um, Aren't you on a yarn diet? I am on a yarn diet. So any yarn that's coming in right now, right now today, <laughs> <laughs> today is um, yarn that's been gifted to me. So, um, and I, so I just want to put that out there that when, when we're showing... I think the last thing that I purchased was yarn from um, Molly of a Homespun House. And um, with shipping and with the Canadian Exchange, that's that's my last pur <laughs> purchase <laughs> online for a while because I just, I can't, I can't afford it. Yeah. So um, the yarn is gorgeous. I still haven't knit with it yet. Um, and also last week, I, when I showed that yarn, I had not touched it until I opened the package. So, like, I don't know if I made any sort of face or anything, but it's super soft. <laughs> I was like, oh, the heavens opened up and the angels sang. And oh. so I'm really excited about knitting with that. But, but I'm, now we're I'm going to... I'm a soft to... addict. Yes. Like, yes. touch. I'm very much a tactile person. For me, it's all about how it feels. Yeah. And you, it's the smell. And, mm -hmm. and the feel? I really like feel, um, I, but I'm sensitive to lots of, lots of stuff too, yeah. right? So, you know, I just, um, I like soft, but I don't, it's not just about soft for me. It's about, um, is my skin sensitive to it? Because, um, there's certain fibers that actually crack my skin because I get eczema really bad from things. Yeah. So, um, that was... That was one of the things that I found when I was crocheting a lot because I used a lot of um, 
I used cotton and acrylic. Those were my mainstays um, because I didn't I didn't know that that there was anything else you could use. And in this in our town here, we didn't have anything else. Yeah, so to that use. was really your only option. So as well. yeah, it was our only option, and I didn't know about like I knew that there were other yarns out there and they were more expensive, but I didn't know what the what the difference was or where the value was. Um, now I know. So, um, and the acrylic that I was using would crack my fingers in between and it was super painful. So I'd have to take breaks and yeah, but, but your daughter's favorite blankets all knit out of acrylic, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's all acrylic. Yeah. And yeah. she loves it. Carries it everywhere. It's her favorite thing in the entire world. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't make that one though. No. Nick did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, he did. We do have some stash enhancements. And Scylla, do you want to start? I would love to start. So I'm just going to talk briefly about this yarn because we're gonna. I'm going to talk more after I've worked it up. Um, but this yarn was gifted to me from Mint Rain Hand Dyed Yarns. And the dyer was... Your name's Katie. Thank you. Katie, this is absolutely wonderful. I love the feel. Um, and the and color is Black Cherry. And the first thing I did when I saw it and I saw that it was Black Cherry is I smelt it. And... I was confused because my, my brain automatically said this should smell like black cherries. And I don't know if it's been me having a conversation with a friend recently about, you know, scratch and stiff stickers from the 80s that <laughs> maintain their smell. But every time I think of black cherry, I feel like it should smell like black cherry. Um, <laughs> and actually, the more I smell this, the more it smells like black cherry. Yeah, it's a I think it's a psychological thing. thing. <laughs> but it's very, very soft, so I can't wait to work it up into something wonderfully beautiful. Yeah, and she also sent me some yarn as well. It is a self-striping sock yarn, of course. <laughs> and it's 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 400 yards. And I'm it's it's very soft, and I'm looking forward to, to knitting this up, and I actually want to cast it on right away. Um, so that is probably going to be going on the needles right away here so can that I, I can it? knit it up. And we will do a proper review once we've actually knit with it. But if you like the colors, because we always go on colors first, it's um, www.mintrain.etsy.com. The yarn is beautiful. The color, this color is really, it's very saturated. It's red and purple, which I really like. Yeah, as I say, those are your colors. Yeah, I really like. Yeah. They are yeah. similar to the socks you're wearing. They're <laughs> exactly like. <laughs> yeah, so I like those colors. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they'll work up differently and stripe differently, though. Yeah, very much so. And you, that's all you had for stash, right? That's all I have for stash. Because you already talked about yeah. the other one you got. And I also did a um, mini swab with Hannah, who is um, Circus Tonic Handmade. And um, we did a mini skein swap. So she sent me all of these luscious little minis. I love the minis. And I'm really excited. I need to pick that blanket up and get some more knit on it there's a couple things I need to get done and then this is my I want to get done so I just had a really so, wonderful thought what's that you know what you should do this year at Christmas what is you should do a mini skein tree so all of your Christmas tree ornaments are mini skeins um I don't agree <laughs> <laughs> I think all of the mini skeins you need to be knit, knit? yeah <laughs> Alright, no problem. <laughs> and Scylla was in... Um, I would make a mini skein tree. <laughs> the city next door. And she picked me up some Madeline Tosh hand dyed yarn. So, and it is in the... Oh, did I even say what the colorway on this one was? I don't know if you did. did. It's called Love Song, sorry. Yes, Love, love Song. song. It's kind of like a love song. Okay, the Madeline Tosh is found pottery. And it's got all of these little speckles. I love the speckles and the colors. And I'm excited about knitting that up as well. Yeah. So that's going to be coming. Yeah. And they told me at the yarn store it was a brand new color. So Mina from the Knitting Expat has gifted me her shawl, the Molu, the squishy shawl. Mina Philip. And that one's brioche, isn't and it? And it's a brioche pattern, and I've never done brioche before. So um, this is, I'm going to learn. It's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to happen right away, but it is going to happen. <laughs> and it's a very, I've looked over the pattern and it's very detailed. So I'm really excited about that because I'm one of those people that needs a lot of 
a lot of detail. <laughs> in your patterns? In my patterns, yep. Yeah. And Monetica Knits gifted me the um, Mocha's shawl. She gifted it to me too. It's um, a beautiful shawl. I can't show you the picture because it's got the pattern right there, but she gifted that to both of us. Mina, the one Mina gifted us, um, she also gave us one to give away and in one of our giveaways. So that's exciting. Thank you very much, Mina. Thank you, Mina. And Monanica Knits gifted us the Mocha's shawl. And so we're going to knit that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when. But, but we're stoked. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much. much. I was very thoughtful. We are doing some cowls right now. We have the Narita Express cowl going on. And that, the Narita Express is by me. And we have over 2,000 people have purchased the pattern. So I'm so excited about that. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. That's so many people. And um, we are extending that knit along to the end of April. So if you haven't cast it on, there's still plenty of time. We are going to go till the end of April. And then we are going to do some giveaways. We don't have all of the giveaways yet. I think there's probably, there might be 10 people entered in that one so far. I want to say. And um, I really, because it's my pattern, I really want... Um, I'll come up with some good gifts because I really want to do something really good. Special? Yeah, to to say thanks for yeah. knitting my pattern and for joining us and and yeah. And um, we also have a double dip thread which has over 141 yes. entries at this point. Yeah, 141. Yeah. So that's really exciting. We are going to be um, doing probably our first draw from that one. Um, I want to say at the beginning of of April I think we'll do our first draw um, but it's going to stay open all year so yeah. you can enter as many times for as many knit alongs as you want uh, we'll put the link down here so you can yeah. go click on that and join in some extra fun knitting and um, we are just gonna keep drawing from the whole list from the whole list yeah throughout the entire year yeah so and so what that means is um, if you are taking part in a knit along and you, you don't even have to be taking part in our knit alongs, you can take a part take part in any knit along that's going on out there in knit along land. All you have to do is um, post a photo and a link to the knit along that you're you're um, you're working with, and their rules are what our rules are for each knit along. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's a, it's a lot. We're not going to be going through and like looking at all of them, so we're leaving. The honesty part up to your discretion. Yeah. <laughs> the the only catch though is if the knit along actually has a clause in it that you can't double dip, then please respect their clause and don't double dip in ours. Yeah. But other than that, any other knit along that doesn't have that no double dipping clause, <laughs> post it all. Post it. We're away. lining up some knit alongs that are happening out throughout the year. We started off the year with only the double knit along. Then we've added the Narita Express. Um, and I was contacted by Crafty Knitter Seven, um, who also signed her her message from um, Lynn and Sue and Selma. Yeah. So they're from the Two Tangled Skeins podcast. Yes, and yes. they are going to be hosting a Canadian knit along that starts on July first and it goes to September thirtieth. <laughs> What that is, is um, knitting from Canadian designers, Canadian dyers, Canadian yarn. Um, and each part of it that you can make Canadian, you can do an entry for for each of those. We'll go into more detail as we get closer. Yeah. But I'm all on board for this. Like I think Me too. I I'm, think I'm it's super a excited. brilliant idea. And I'm so glad that uh, Sue asked us to join because I'm... Me too. I'm already thinking about how I'm going to knit things Canadian. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. how do I take Canadian yarn that's from a Canadian dyer yeah. that is Canadian spun? But it doesn't even have to be... No, um, but I'm like, that's in a Canadian-based color. <laughs> but it doesn't even have to be uh, like a Canadian-based yarn because there are some not Canadian-based yarn companies that have Canadian-inspired Canadian -based. yarn. So, so there's some that have like names of vancouver like cities and canadian cities and stuff so yeah and I if think you can spin it to be canadian then yeah. that will be really good i know i saw some uh yarn that was called northern lights i can't remember who the dyer was right now yeah but 
You know, I'm pretty sure you could spin that into a Canadian spin. Yeah. Yes, because we have northern lights. We are, and we're in the north. The great <laughs> white north. And as well, um, I'm in talks with um, Katie of um, Inside Number 23 podcast, and I'll talk about that later, um, about doing a Fair Isle knit along in the fall. So Ooh. that's going to be coming up too. So um, just some things to think of, um, think ahead for, because we are so bad for planning ahead <laughs> and talking to you about it ahead of time. So I'm trying to be better about that this year. That's one of my um, uh, New Year's resolutions is to try to be more organized. And, and so letting you guys in on things farther ahead than a week or two in advance I feel like that's yeah. I think you're doing a really good job of that this year I'm really trying like but last year too we were just getting our feet wet and trying to figure out what our podcast was going to be and yeah and that's true like when we first started podcasting we didn't know a how long it was going to last we we our very first episode was just a, kind of a one-off we were like ah let's see how this goes this is kind of fun yeah well our first first episode wasn't even a real episode it was more like a teaser trailer yeah and so we, yeah, and yeah. so we, we didn't even know how long we would be doing this. And Scylla's studying and stuff, so we were just like, well, we'll see how it goes. And, and it can grow and change with us and be whatever we want it to be. Yeah. We're going on a knitting retreat, it's the Okanagan Knitting Retreat in Sorrento, which is somewhere in the Shushwap area of British Columbia. Um, so I guess it would be considered North Okanagan area. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so it's, it's super exciting. Um, registration opened March 11th and we have both registered for classes. I think I'm going to be taking a class on how to fix your mistakes. It's, I think it's called the little things or something about the little things. And I think it's going to be really good because sometimes I make mistakes and I can't figure it out. And I'm sure it'll be exciting for Marsha too, instead of me just being like, here, <laughs> You almost poked me in the eye. I'm so glad you're wearing glasses. No, you don't. It should be like, here. <laughs> she just backs up. I'm not really trustworthy. Um, yeah, and I was just thinking about that time that you would shound me with your needle in the arm. <laughs> I was just thinking about that too. Um, at least that, like, they're like trooper. blunt size sixes. Um, but anyway, yeah, this new treat is going to be so much fun. Um, we're going out on a thurs on Thursday evening, mm -hmm. and we're going to leave on Sunday afternoon. But the retreat itself, there's um, you can do a full day class or a half day class on Friday, and then there's a class that runs Saturday and Sunday. Um, and it's it's going to be wonderful. We've already been in touch with a bunch of people who are going. Mm -hmm. um, Shannon from Soxetra. I always learn people's names, and I always forget what their actual Instagram or. <laughs> So she's from the Sock Cetera podcast. Podcast. And um, she contacted me and um, asked what exactly the retreat was. And I, I don't know if she's a for sure yet, but she's she's a planning on it. So that is really awesome because then I get to hang out with Shannon. And I think that I think that Shannon and I are going to be, become best friends. I think that you guys are kindred spirits. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So if there's anybody else though who's thinking about con like going to this retreat, please feel free to contact us if you're looking for more information or you just want to like get together while you're there. And by more information, we can only give you what we know from the brochure. But Marsha went last year, so she knows a little bit more than I do. Yeah, we can send you the the link to yeah. to the registration. Yeah. But there's uh there's an intro to lace course that they do there, and there's a designing course, and there's also an oddball knitting course. And that's the one I'm taking is the um the one that's more based on designing designing yeah. yeah yeah so I think that's gonna be good I just every time I go to to something um, even if it's even if it's a class uh, like um, a class that I I've taken before or I'm just like on the fence whether I'm more advanced than the classes or not I take it even even like I took um, at Knit City I took sock knitting with uh, Kate Atherley and she's a fantastic teacher and I still took like and I've you know I've knit a lot of socks so <laughs> I still took a lot of information from that and um, and it was really good yeah. so I always take something away from each class that I've taken um, and this course is like this 
one is more of a it's more class based it there isn't really a market there's a couple stores that are represented there but um, well the last time I went which was two years ago um, but it's just it's a lot of fun it's a lot of learning happens and I just really enjoyed it um, that's where I learned how to knit lace, lace. and read charts and stuff for, with um, with a lady named Miriam and she was fabulous and she was one of my first Ravelry friends I think her and Molly from Homespun House were my very first Ravelry friends Aww. I know they were your first I know so um, yeah so that's coming up and we're super excited we're so excited I can't wait I was just like giddy once <laughs> once we were registered <laughs> I just yay so excited. Yeah. You should see this. It's like 11 o'clock at night. And we're like, but we have to make sure we're able to get the classes we want and get a registration in. And, and Knit City is coming up in the fall in October. Um, Knit City 2016. And Shannon from uh, Sock Cetra Podcast has a thread open for mm -hmm. anybody interested in doing a meetup. There's going to be like a podcasters meetup, but it's not just for podcasters. It's for everybody who's interested in meeting all the podcasters. So, um, Eric from Sticks and Twine is going to be there. The grocery girls are going to be there. <laughs> the girls from Relentless Knitting Podcast. Um, Sarah from the Make Things Club is going to be there. Chrissy, I think, is going to be there um, from Snappy Stitches. Shannon's going to be there. And there's there's quite a few more, and I don't want to forget anybody but um but it's gonna be a really exciting time yeah and not everybody's confirmed yet whether they're they're going to be there yet or not but um really excited yeah um it's gonna be great to meet is everybody is knit city kind of equivalent and i mean that in loose terms um to like canada's version of rhinebeck um no, no. that's a wool festival wool festival okay but it does have a massive market. It's got classes. Um, last year... Sorry, Knit City or Rhinebeck? Knit City? Knit City. Okay. Well, I, yeah, and Rhinebeck, I'm sure, has classes and things, too. Um, Yarn Harlot was there last year. Uh, Claire Parks was there last year. Um, and Kate Atherley was there. Um, uh, tons of designers, tons of Canadian designers were there. Tin Can Knits was there. Um, some amazing yarn dyers were there. Um, Mud Punch was there. I met her and um, Sylvia Bobilvia. She's a designer, and I met her and just a lot. There's tons more, tons, wow. tons more. Like those are just off the top of my head. Those sound like those are the ones you met. <laughs> I met lots more. Like I met a lot of wow. a lot of people there, and I I just loved it because it turns this um, this. It's, you know, we are in an online community. Yeah. Community. And it turns it It feels real, more real. You know, and yeah. Jenny from Lone Larch is going to be there. And she um, gave us those those bags. And she's got a podcast oh, as well. I love those bags. She's going to meet up. You know what's funny is she was there last year. Really? And when I first watched her podcast, I was like, she is very, very familiar. Then I found out she was at Knit City. And I'm like, fairly certain that I saw her there. Like, Yeah. <laughs> that's cool yeah, yeah I love her bags yeah her bags are amazing yeah and her podcast is so cute I love it yeah it really so is. I've totally been catching up on my podcast watching <laughs> big time um, and I caught up on hers and I caught up on um, Sock Cetera and I caught up on I think it's called Penguin Soup I love that name and Penguin Soup and I, I know you all have heard from tons of other podcasters about Katie of um, Inside Number 23. And she, I, to be honest, I didn't want to watch her podcast till I could sit down and like binge it. Because I knew from her aesthetic, because you can tell by seeing her like pictures, that I was going to love her. Because <laughs> we have the same style and um, like mine isn't to the degree hers is. But, um, yeah, I knew that I was going to love her. And so I binge watched her this week and I watched all of her episodes and then, um, that's kind of awesome that you did that. I know she's, she's adorable. And then we've been um, chatting back and forth and she's just, she is so cute. She's a lot of fun. 
And so we talked about doing our, um, our uh, knit along together. And so that's happening because we both love color work. And, um, and I got the name of some of her patterns that she's done. And I'm super excited about casting all of those on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And so I've just, she totally inspired me to get sewing again. And I'm going to show you some stuff at the end of the podcast that I've been sewing. So we're going to leave the knitting content for this part and then the sewing will be at the, at the end. end but I'm I'm just gonna take a minute here and show you some things that I have off the needles um, now this is called winter moss and I started I showed it to you last week I'm dropping things on the floor I showed it to you last week and I was or two weeks ago and two weeks ago I was about here yeah you hadn't even started and that. then when we were gone to the um, uh, Sparkling Hill. When we were at Sparkling Hill, I cast on, I finished knitting up to here, I cast on the sleeves and I was ready, I did the sleeves and then I cast them on and then I was ready to start the color work and then I realized I'd done the sleeves in the wrong color. <gasps> so I ripped those off and I ripped back about 10 rows because I'd knit, yeah, knit up to there, so, or six rows. And so I pulled those out and I just um, threw them in my bag. <laughs> I didn't even rip them out. I just took them off and threw them away. And then I grabbed the right color and I knit those and then I attached those and then started the color work. The color work flew. And when I was, when I was knitting this, um, I wasn't so in love with the colors when I was about here. Because they aren't super my colors and I was like well I know somebody who would love these colors and I could gift it to them if if I don't love it <laughs> if I don't love it by the time it's done um, it's done in a drop cell pack of yarn and the yellow was a gift from Mina um, of the knitting expat podcast and I had the gray and I picked up the black so um, two by two ribbing at the bottom it's a free pattern and I really liked it like it was really enjoyable it has short rows which I really like because you know which is the back and which is the front so that's short row work in there and how the colors came came out they are just popping like, I love it it just turned out so nicely I love it and I put it on and it it, it looks fits great and it suits on me you. and it's it's been blocked so it's had its bath already <laughs> and it's wearing its pants right it's, it's pants are up and it's yeah it's a fingering weight um, top I don't want to say sweater because it's not fully a sweater but I need to wear something underneath of it because the alpaca is a little bit itchy, itchy on my skin. Like it doesn't feel like it would be to touch the yarn. Like it feels no, really it, soft. No, it does feel really soft. But once it's on, I find it feels a little bit itchy. So would just like a tank top be enough? Um, or no, I think need something. T-shirt with sleeves. Yeah, maybe. No, I would do or, like a long sleeve T-shirt if I wore something under it. Oh, just, okay. Just so that it's not touching my skin or, or like... Um, like I think, uh, like a button-down top in black or gray underneath of it would look really nice with the collar poking out over the top. Oh yeah, that would look good. I think that would look really nice too. So, um, some options. It, I I love how it turned out. It's a free pattern, so it doesn't cost you anything, and I definitely recommend it. Yeah, it's really pretty. The next thing I have off my needles, which I got off the needles today, and I'm still weaving in the ends, but by the time we are done this episode, I should be done. <laughs> it's the Tucker sweater, and it's from Interweave Knits Fall um, Fall uh, magazine, and it is on the front here. It's that one there. It's that one there. I love that you picked a color so, that was almost the same as that, too. Yeah, and I'm doing it in Malabrigo and Malabrigo Rios. And the the sizing is about 36 to 38. So they're about four inches apart. And I think that that is because the um, the repeats, each repeat is about four inches, I think. I think that's, that's the reason behind it. I could be wrong. Um, 
this flew off the needles and I'm not even kidding like I cast it on on the 13th of March it is the 18th of March and I took a day and a half to, uh. yeah of no knitting at all like a complete full day of I just sewed so it took me about four days to knit this I love that because was it the last podcast when I said that you could knit a sweater in a week and then you yeah. said we haven't proven that yet yeah <laughs> guess what <laughs> yeah so I knit the size um the 36 inch um and I did it in Malabrigo Rios now this grows a lot like I and I'd heard that and so what I did is I cast it on on needles that are smaller than what it calls for. It calls for a size five and five and a half millimeter. And I cast it on on a four and a half and a five millimeter. So I went down half a needle size for each. So it is like, it, it its pants are down. It has not had its bath. I'm still weaving in ends. There's still just like three ends to weave in, I think. And um, so that's happening today. Uh, so by the time you see this episode, this will be all done and it will be having its bath. The cables were so fast. I started them last night and I knit for probably three hours, four hours. And then today I finished from there the rest of the way up. So, and then I'm weaving in ends and I've Kitchener stitched while we we're sitting here. I've Kitchenered. The underarms so that one's done and that one's done so they're both done. up. and the yarn is the Malabrigo Rios now this is the very first time in my life my whole life all of the years that I did a gauge swatch and I did I did a gauge swatch because I've never knit something this big out of Malabrigo I've done hats I think like a hat out of Malabrigo maybe and so um, it wasn't anything that gauge super mattered a lot on um, so I just cast on a bunch of stitches so that I would have because the gauge is 16 stitches to 4 inches and 24 rows to 4 inches um, and so it grew more wide than it did up and down but it did grow both um, directions? It did grow both directions, but vertically it grew less than it grew out. Um, it grew in, with this many stitches, I think there's 34 stitches on here, 36 stitches. It grew half an inch out, I think. Fairly certain. Um, I have it written down. But it grew, yeah, about half an inch out. So, and that's over that many stitches. So with something this size... Um, I love this because it's got short rows too so it automatically you can tell you can tell which way is forward um, so with something this size it's going to grow a lot more than that so right now it has negative ease on me and it's not like I'd say it's probably about two or three inches negative ease but once it's had its bath it's going to have It'll either be right on gauge or maybe have like half an inch to an inch of positive ease. It calls for two inches of positive ease. So with it having as much negative ease as it has right now, it still looks great on me. It's It looks awesome. It's super soft. It's very comfortable. Um, once it's had its bath, it'll grow and then it will have the the wider look that, um, that can, it will have. Can I ask a beginner question? Mm-hmm. Um, because this is a heavier yarn, like even just like weight wise, mm -hmm. um, I know that you said that looking at the swatch, it grew more out than it grew down, mm -hmm. but will gravity play a role in how it stretches out when you're wearing it over time? Or... I think so. And I think that's, I think that you find that with, um, super wash wools anyway, it's not so much with, um, non super wash wools because they kind of grab each other because they that's why they have the itch and stuff is because they have um, scales okay and so they grab each other so it's not as big of a thing and also top-down sweaters I have heard and read that top-down sweaters actually will um, grow more in length because of how the stitches hold on to each other versus bottom up will maintain their length a little bit longer um, I didn't do anything 
different for the length. The length it called for in the pattern is the length that I did because I don't mind it getting a little bit longer once it's had its bath, but I didn't want it to be too short. And it will give me the extra room to just like give it a little extra pull when it's wet to just stretch it out a little bit more. But I can tell it's going to block out beautifully. I'm, I'm so excited about this sweater. And I definitely, definitely recommend it. The one thing that I found is adding the sleeves in. The first sleeve that you add in, um, it's it's written a little bit weird. Um, yeah, it's just written weird. And I just, I just changed it so that it w would work properly. If, if you knit this and you get to the adding the first sleeve and you're actually working on it, it how they word it it kind of makes it sound like you're supposed to put the sleeve on upside down kind of <laughs> <laughs> the second sleeve is written fine but the first sleeve is just sounds a little confusing. it's a little bit yeah it's a little bit confusing but if you understand basic sweater construction then you'll be able to figure out how to how to do it so it's, it doesn't knit on funny so another beginner question yeah if you were a fairly new knitter knitting that for the first time yeah would you recommend Putting the second sleeve on before the first so you could intuitively no. understand a little bit better or? no because okay. of how it doesn't make a difference because for the second sleeve by the time you get there you can just knit it on oh okay but the first sleeve it wants you to um, to do a certain thing first which doesn't really make sense for what what you're doing okay so it just means an extra end to weave in. And this yarn is the Malabrigo in the Sandbank colorway, number 131. I love that color. So very, very happy with this. I'm very happy with both of these. I can't believe I have two sweaters to show you guys today. <laughs> didn't, you, didn't you say earlier today too that it's the very first time you've ever knit a sweater and had like skeins left over? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, no, as many skeins. I have ah. two and a half skeins left over of this yarn and I bought as many yards as I was going to need for the sweater that it called for for my size. So which is very interesting because that doesn't, I don't... You think it had more in the skeins than... I don't know. <laughs> it's a mystery. Very good question. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like the mysteries of knitting. Unsolved mysteries. Yeah. But I'm happy with it. Like it's, I'm so, I'm super happy with this sweater actually. This is my first Malabrigo sweater and I'm very happy with it. Oh, somebody sent me a link. I, sorry, I can't remember who it was off the top of my head. Um, in our Ravelry group to a sweater comber. Um, and she was concerned because I mentioned shaving my sweater and I didn't actually mean shaving it. <laughs> <laughs> like taking a razor. Yeah, taking shave my leg, shave a sweater. Yeah, no, I yeah, take it. Well, and because because I do that sweaters pill, yarn pills because of short fibers, and it's the short fibers. And if you shave it, it creates more more short, short fibers. fibers. So you're gonna have a never never ending pile of pills. But um, I do have a sweater that needs to be depilled very very badly, and it was done in Barocco Vintage. And it is very, very, very pilly. And it started pilling the first time I wore it. So I've never depilled it. And it, I've worn it 10 times and it wow. definitely is the worst for wear. So I need to depill it and, cause I'm not gonna stop wearing it. I just need <laughs> to take all the pills off of it. So yeah, so that is, the knitting content for today. So thank you for watching. If you are not interested in seeing some sewing stuff, um, if you are, then I'm going to get started in showing you guys that. So um, yesterday and the day before I did some sewing. Um, it's spring break. So I asked my girls what they wanted to do for spring break. And one of the things they wanted to do was for me to make them each a dress. So that's where that started um, and I was already inspired because of Katie um, and she, I love her vintage style. <laughs> so she showed on her last episode a pattern um, in her Netflix and knit and sew 
Um, in her Netflix? Yeah, she's got a segment called Netflix and, ne oh, okay. and soap. And one of the things she showed was a skirt with um, uh, like an overall bib. And the pattern she has has a square bib. And she, but she wants to do a V. Oh, and that would be I cute. Have Did you have that pattern? The pattern that she so likes. Now, I made this pattern previously. Um, I made it, what? Uh, Mom lived with us, so that would have been six years six ago. Six years ago. Six yeah. years or seven years. And I did it in a blue cord fabric. Um, but I found that the bib on the top, because the, the fabric I chose was so heavy, it added a lot of weight to me. And um, not that it mattered anyway, but I was just self-conscious of the amount of weight that it added to me. So I actually sewed up this pattern. My mom helped me um, change it at the time. So it's actually what is my size from seven years ago or six years ago. And, um, and then I sewed three of them up and in the last couple days and I added a couple inches because I've put on a, a couple, a couple friendly pounds. Um, and I took a waistband from another pattern that I have and I added like five inches to that one. <laughs> so I took the waistband from this one and put it on the skirt of this one and I added pockets. This one has exterior pockets, but I added pockets into the sides and I put a zipper in, in the back. So um, I'll show you the first one. Do, do, do. So this is the first one. It's kind of like a stretchy jean fabric that I that I used. And this is the waistband. It's not as wide as it is on there because I just used the pattern and then folded it over. And the pockets in the side are red, which I love, 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 love the red love. stripes. And so this is the second one I made. And the first one I made... This was my prototype and hence why you should always use something else besides your nice fabric. But this is the first one I made and I made tons of mistakes and stitched it up and, and learned some things while I was doing it. But I did this fabric is the pockets for this one and this fabric is the pockets for this one. I like that. So yeah, so I still have to add, I still have to trim some threads and add the hook enclosure there. but. Yeah, it turned out really nicely. They are long, They're so very long, long. And, and I hang them for a day before I hem them just so that they hang right. And this is the final one that I made. I like that one. That one's and a bit this lighter. One, yes, it's a lot lighter fabric. So the one I'm wearing is the heaviest fabric. The red one's the next. And then this is a cotton fabric that's really light. And it's... It's paisley because I love paisley. And the pockets in this one are just paisley. So um, I'm super excited about this. The pockets are really deep. They are really deep. Which I love. And yeah, so that one's that one's done too. Um, it's not, this one has not been hemmed yet. It's the only one that hasn't because I knit, I knit it. I <laughs> sewed it yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, I'm standing up and talking. I sewed it yesterday, so it's been hanging up so that I can hem it today. So that's going to be happening today. I just have to rehang it. And I also made a couple dresses for these are pretty. my girls. I like these. And I'll show you the patterns. They also show their personalities. Mm -hmm. So I let them each pick a pattern. And I've got tons and tons of patterns. I've gotten rid of boxes of patterns, actually. So, um... This is the one I'm going to show you first. It's this pattern, but she wanted long sleeves. And after I got the sleeves done, before I added the elastic for the for the wrists, I got her to try it on, and she said she'd like to keep it without the elastic in the wrists because um, my girls have Asian heritage, so it kind of when she wears it with the sleeves as wide as they are. It's really like a kimono. It looks like a kimono and it's so cute on her. Do, do, do. And it's just a cotton fabric and it's got a, a piece of fabric that goes across here that you can't really see but there's gathering on the top of that and on the bottom of that. And she loves it. Loves it, loves it. So 
that worked out really well. And there's a big zipper yeah, down the back. So cute it's on her. So cute on her. And my other daughter chose. Where did I put it? This pattern. And she wanted um, this one here, but I didn't do the ribbon in the front. So, and she wanted long sleeves as well, but she did not want that shape of sleeve. So I, she's very particular, very particular. And she wanted it to be f more floofy on the bottom. So I increased the size at the bottom for her so that it has a little bit more of a, a floof, a floof. She folded it up. So that's why it's wrinkly. It was ironed. So it's got a nice, <laughs> nice skirt on it and the body. They, I took them shopping for the fabric. So they both picked out their own, their own fabric and you can see the, the detail down the front it's it's a little bit difficult in the red fabric and these are the the sleeves they're so cute on that it. she yeah that she wanted so I put it on and she's like well I want it to be this big so I did that for her it looks so cute on her and I did a white zipper because I did not have red so that turned out really well and I'm loving being back at the machine um, and I did get a lot of sewing done in the last couple days. <laughs> you did get a lot of sewing done the last couple days. I love that it's like a day and a half worth of sewing. Is I know. That. I think that's it. Oh, one other thing. I wanted to talk about this. Somebody was asking me about this. Um, the knit kit. And Scylla got this for me for Christmas. And I just wanted to talk about it quickly because um, the crochet hook that fits in here I don't know where it disappeared to. It popped out all on its own. And the um, tape measure the tape measure piece that holds it outside of the casing broke off. So the tape measure is actually inside there. And I have to unscrew it to get, to get the tape measure out. I still use it. still has, like, that's where I keep my scissors and all of those doodad things and stuff. So I'm still using it. I do want to pull that out. But I just wanted to... To let anyone know if they're interested in getting one of these that you know maybe throwing a piece of tape across there might be a good idea um, just to hold that in because I don't I don't take it out of my knitting bag very often no. and so it doesn't have very far to go so I, I just I don't don't know where I lost that so yeah so that's good yeah so by the time you see this, this sweater will be done and it will be drying on its towel. Because it will have had its bath. Locked. Its pants will be pulled up. <laughs> Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about, Scylla? Um, I don't think so. I think the only thing is uh, I don't have any finished objects. Um, and that's actually a good thing because that means I've been making progress on my thesis. And so there is a possibility in the next couple months that Marsha might be doing some podcasting on her own just as I'm getting into the thick of things because I don't have a lot of free time with working as well. Um, and I'm also doing another project with another agency outside of the one I normally work with. Um, and so if that happens, Marsha might do one or two podcasts on her own without me in it just so I can get caught up and get academically ahead to where I need to be in order to finish um, this spring. All right. So with that, thank you very much for tuning, tuning in. in. Thanks for watching us and joining in. And we will see you soon. And don't forget to subscribe and come over to our Ravelry group and say hi and join our group. Have a great two weeks and we'll see you soon. See you soon. Till next time. Until next time.